We continue our series, Seven Signs of John, and this morning we're looking at living water. We are in John, the fourth chapter, verses 4 through 26, and it is the story of the Samaritan woman and Jesus at the well. Now, Jesus had to go through Samaria, so he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to you, will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. And Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his livestock? And Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks from this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water I will give them will, thir- will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give to them will become in them a spring of water, welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. He told her, Go call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. And Jesus answered her, You're right when you say you have no husband. The fact is you've had five husbands, and the man you are now with is not your husband. What you said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worship on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Woman, Jesus replied, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. And yet a time is coming and has now come when true worshipers will worship the Father in the spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks." God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know that Messiah, called Christ, is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. And then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, am he. Just then his disciples came back. They marveled that he was talking to a woman, but no one asked and said, What do you seek, or why are you talking with her? So the woman left her water jar and went away into the town and said to the people, Come, see a man who has told me all that I ever did. Can this be the Christ? They went out of town, and there were coming to him. May the Lord bless his word to our hearts and minds this morning. Well, as I said, this morning we're looking at this uh, beautiful story of Jesus and the woman at the well, and uh, we're looking at living water. Have you ever been really, really thirsty in your life? Anyone? Anyone at all? Wow. I took a hike once in the Grand Canyon. Now, if you know much about the Grand Canyon, there is a beautiful waterfall and little... um, pool called Havasu Falls. It's two or three falls, depending on the time of the year, that is just beautiful. And uh, a friend and I wanted to go camping there, and, and the only way to really get there is to hike. And uh, it, it is a four to six hour hike, depending on how fast you hike. And uh, the time, the only time that we could go was in July, the beginning of July. Now, if you know the Grand Canyon, you know it is hot in July. And uh, it's usually over 100 degrees, sometimes 100, 120 degrees, and it's super, super dry. And so um, there's all kinds of signs where you, where you pull in and you park, and sometimes there's a ranger standing there, but the signs say, make sure you have plenty of water for this trip. And, and I had all the water in my mind, having grown up in Pennsylvania, that I needed, which was, you know, I had a, a pack with two water uh, uh, bottles on each side and then a couple water bottles in my backpack. But I got to tell you, now we started out at five o'clock in the morning because that's the only reasonable time to make that kind of a hike when it's four to six hours through uh, the desert of the Grand Canyon. I mean, this is the deserty part and uh, winds uh, down to this beautiful falls. And so we started out and, and I'm going to tell you, I, I tried to measure my sips, but it, it is so dry there that time of year that you don't even sweat. I mean, you sweat, but it evaporates off your body immediately. And uh, you can like count your breath. So it's like you're counting and you're thinking, okay, how much water do I need? And I got to tell you, uh, about three and a half hours in there, man, I was almost out of water thinking, and it's all these signs, make sure you bring water, what well, was too late then. So uh, 
we had just enough water, but I can tell you, by the time that we got to Havasu Falls, which is this uh, cool, beautiful falls, and uh, dove into the water, man, I got to tell you, I was so relieved, one, to, to drink water and also to feel the cool, refreshing water. But uh, uh, it was a, an amazing and beautiful trip, but I got to tell you, I really appreciated water in that moment. Cool, whatever. So, in this moment, when I invite you to walk back into this story as we've been looking at the seven signs of the Gospel of John. This isn't a sign. It comes after uh, the sign at the wedding feast, but there's some important messages here that kind of come off of that. And as we look at Jesus, and there is a deep and profound truth here, and I think more than one, as a matter of fact. And so uh, we're told that Jesus is going through Samaria, and he stops at this um, well, Jacob's well, outside the town of Sychar. And uh, it's around noon. And some of your Bibles say the six hour, the six hours uh, begins with daylight, then around six o'clock, so six more hours, it's around noon. So it's in the heat of the day. And Jesus tells the disciples to go into town and to get some food. Town was some uh, uh, a distance away, at least an hour or more. And there is Jesus beside the water. And this woman comes up to Jesus, and near where Jesus is sitting by the well, and she begins to lower her uh, bucket into the well. Now, this is Jacob's well, and it's about 100 feet deep. It's a deep, deep well. So you couldn't get water without that, without a bucket. And Jesus looks at this woman, who's a Samaritan woman, and says, will you give me a drink? Wow. And it's a beautiful moment. Now, there's a number of truths. We think about this. Now, this is our water break along uh, the journey. And I think the first is that Jesus is honest with his needs, right? And the woman had needs, but Jesus led with his needs and said, I'm thirsty. Can I get a drink of water? And I think in our own lives, that spiritual truth thinks is some important things. If Jesus could be honest with his needs, don't we also need to be honest with our needs? Now, I don't know what your needs are this morning. I mean, sometimes we need, sometimes we just need a drink of water. Believe me, I knew that on that hike to Havasu Falls. But I think for all of us, when we come to worship in the morning or just go through life, where are we with our needs? Some of us really want to pull back. We want to wall up. We want to act like we don't have any needs. And in this moment, Jesus is very open and transparent, maybe even vulnerable, and says, you know, I don't have a bucket. Can you give me a drink? And so the first lesson I learned in this is to be honest with our needs. And I think that transparency of Jesus, that honesty of Jesus admitting that he was thirsty helped this woman to open up to her own needs. And many times when we share our needs with others, uh, be it family members, friends, or whoever, maybe even a stranger, they are more open and honest as well. And the second spiritual truth I, I learned in this is to reach across barriers. Now, this woman is shocked that Jesus would ask her for a drink of water to share a cup with her. And, and why is that? Well, she explains. She says, how is it that you, a Jew, would ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a glass of water? And the history, if you don't know, is the Samaritans, the Jews, were avowed enemies. Uh, the Samaritan region was part of the, what was called the Northern Ten Tribes that were conquered and defeated first. Uh, many of the people were taken away, the majority of them, and then some of them came back, but they intermarried with the enemy, basically. They didn't look at the whole Hebrew Scriptures. They only uh, looked at the first five books of the Bible, the Tentatuch is, is their Bible, it had some dis different customs, but they had become avowed enemies to the Jews. There's still, um, you know, some enmity in that region today. And so Jesus reaches across first, you know, the racial divide in this moment. And you can think of maybe times in, um, you know, in our own past in this country, when many times we've had racial moments. But, you know, in the, in the deep south, there was times when you would not share uh, a glass of water with a person of the other race. Still the case around the world. In this moment, Jesus is doing something very radical, and he says, let me share a glass of water with you. He was reaching across racial divides, and he was reaching across uh, a gender divide. It, it was a very patriarchal society at that time. And so Jesus is talking openly to this woman, and she is she's shocked by that, frankly. And then here it is. Jesus is a religious leader. She's this woman. And, and then there is also this religious divide because there were different religions, different faiths. Now, they came for the same roots, okay? And, and many of our faiths do. And, but Jesus is willing to reach across that divide as a Samaritan versus a, as a Jew. And I think in our 
our own lives. Sometimes don't we get too caught up in religion over relationship? I mean, not just Christian, but, you know, what flavor of Christian are you? Is it Presbyterian? Is it Methodist? Congregational? Catholic? Whatever it is. And Jesus is reaching across this in this divide and in this moment. And then there is the issue of lifestyle. Now, when Jesus talks to her and says, go and get your husband, she says immediately, well, I'm not married. And Jesus replies, that's true. You're not married to the person you're living with now, but you've had five previous husbands. And so go and get them. And Jesus isn't put off by that. And so there's this lifestyle issue. Uh, This woman probably came to the well around noon in the heat of the day when everyone else would come early when it was cooler because she wanted to avoid all the gossip. You know, all the people talking about her, about her lifestyle. But Jesus in this moment reaches across those divides, the divide of of race, the divide of gender, the divide of religion, the divide of lifestyle. And Jesus is so real and open to her. And I think that's a great lesson for us. How are you about reaching across the barriers, the things that divide us in life, be it race or gender or religion or lifestyle, and just be open and honest and welcoming to people. Jesus sets an incredible example in this moment. And as he's invited into this moment, because of that, Jesus helps her discover living water, which I think is the next spiritual truth to us. And so she says, are, are you greater than uh, our father, Jacob, our patriarch, our patriarchal father who founded this well? And Jesus in that moment said, if you knew who was talking to you, you would have asked for living water, and I would have given you living water that springs up to eternal life. And she says, sir, I, I want that water. And I think when we look at Jesus, we realize that Jesus is the living water that quenches the deep spiritual thirst of our soul. Are there times when you feel perhaps just like you're your soul, not just your body. You know, when you're thirsty in your body, that's one thing. But when you're thirsty in your soul, that is sort of a dryness, the parchedness that just goes right down to the soles of our feet and the soul of our heart. And in this moment, Jesus is inviting her into living water. I love that verse from Revelations, by the way. Uh, and there's two verses that are like that, that talk about Jesus as the living water to eternal life. We're going to need eternal uh, living water in heaven, and Jesus provides that taste here that takes us on into eternity. How are you this morning with your soul? Do you feel parched and dry for some of the things that we have gone through that have been, you know, quite difficult in life? Jesus is inviting us into spiritual living water that is beautiful, that is refreshing, uh, that lasts forever. And it's something that we have to keep tasting from, but Jesus is the well of eternal life. And so in this moment, this woman discovers this, and Jesus says something here that I think is beautiful about tapping into, the secret of tapping into that living water, because she starts to talk about different kinds of religion and everything, and Jesus says, the time is coming and now here is here that those who worship God must worship in spirit and in truth. Well, what does that mean? Well, one, I think it means our own spirit to come with our, with our spirit, with kind of an openness, but also to enter into God's Holy Spirit. This is the age of, of the Holy Spirit and that God moves in us in our spirit. And in truth, to be honest, even as Jesus was open and honest, and this woman that he's talking to is open and honest about her lifestyle and talking to Jesus. And how are you about being open and honest as you come to worship. So many of us, we get tied up with so many different things. You know, do we stand up? Do we sit down? What kind of music it is? Is it your favorite scripture or not? Is there enough Bible, too much Bible, whatever? And and Jesus is saying, you know, push some of that aside if you're wearing a tie or not wearing a tie, and just be open and honest to God. Worship God in spirit and in truth. And when you do that, you will discover the living water that springs up into eternal life. Jesus can break down some of those barriers in our own life. And then finally, to, to share the good news with others. What does this woman do? Now, she doesn't know everything about, you know, this. she's had more questions than she's had answers, but she met and had a relationship with Jesus Christ that was life transforming. And she goes in and she not only invites the guy that she's uh, living with, she tells the, the whole town, come and meet the person who told me things about my life that I never even knew. And notice that we've been saying that, that, that key kind of phrase in John, come and see. 
Come and experience. You don't have to have all the answers to share the good news of Jesus Christ with people. Thank God, because none of us have all the answers. I don't care how much schooling you have, how much Bible you have memorized. We all have probably more questions than we do answers. But Jesus Christ is the answer. He is the living person. He is the living water of God that comes to us to refresh our spiritual souls. Today, I think there's just so many things that we can learn from Jesus and the woman at the well. Two of those spiritual truths they went over were from Jesus, and two of those spiritual truths were from the woman at the well. The first spiritual truth, of course, again, is to be honest with our needs. If Jesus can be honest with his needs, can't we also be honest with our needs, be they physical, spiritual, relation, whatever they are? Be honest with our needs. And the second is to reach across barriers, even as Jesus did, race, gender, religion, lifestyle. We get so hung up with all of those things. And honestly, haven't we through all the pandemic, I mean, we're all, people said that Americans have become more and more isolated, but the pandemic has added to that. And we feel the pressure of the isolation. And uh, teenagers are just saying that the isolation is just crushing them. Uh, The loneliness, the kind of despair that's out there. Be willing to reach across the divide, to be a friend to someone. You never know the impact and the difference that could make. And then to discover living water. And how do we do that? It's not about religion. It's about relationship. Coming into relationship with Jesus Christ. And one of the keys to that is to worship in spirit and in truth. Don't get hung up with all the, the, you know, the tapestry, sort of the trappings of faith. Those are all good. You know, the kinds of music we sing and what we decide to wear, and the traditions are all great, but be able to see through it and see that the most important thing is Jesus Christ and our relationship to him, to worship in spirit and in truth. And then finally, to share the good news. Who can you share it with? Who can you say, come and see? Not I have all the answers, but come and meet the person who has shown me the truth of life, who is the living water that is changing my life. I'd like to close with a a story that I really enjoy. I think that's great truth. Billy Graham, as you probably know, one of the greatest preachers, maybe the greatest preacher of the 20th century, and uh, just held these incredible, huge stadium kinds of event, evangelistic events where many people came to Christ. A lot of people had their eye on Billy Graham and, you know, any mistake that he might do. But at one point in the sort of the height of his career, he told some associates that he wanted to meet J.W. Marriott. Now, (laughs) they they said, you can't go meet J.W. Marriott. They said, he's a, he's a Mormon. You know, he's not the same as us. We're evangelical Christians, you know, kind of conservative. And so, uh, but Billy Graham insisted. He told him, he said, no, listen, I'd like to have lunch with J.W. Marriott. Will you go ahead and contact him and tell him that I'd like to have lunch together? And J.W. Marriott agreed. And so Billy Graham and J.W. Marriott, who's this Mormon, had lunch with Billy Graham. And they developed a very, very deep friendship. Now, J.W. Mary remained a Mormon all of his life, and Billy Graham, of course, didn't change his beliefs to um, you know the, some of the Mormon particulars. They both shared the faith in Jesus Christ, but they were able to focus on the thing that they shared, which was faith in Jesus Christ, develop a deep friendship to the point that whenever Billy Graham would travel around the world, across the country, wherever he was, if there was a Marriott Hotel, he always stayed in the Marriott Hotel. And later in his career, when he's at a big kind of uh, luncheon, a breakfast luncheon with a lot of dignitaries. Uh, He announced, because J.W. Marriott was there, he said, you know, one of my closest friends is J.W. Marriott. And that surprised a lot of people. But for a lot of people, it opened their eyes to say, maybe they share more than what separates them. And I think Billy Graham really pointed that. And that relationship, that friendship of Billy Graham to J.W. Mary was a, was a source of, of water, of refreshment to Billy Graham's soul throughout his life. So today, we all have so many needs. We need to be honest about them. Our greatest need, of course, is a spiritual part soul that so many of us have because of whatever we face. It's, of course, been a a long pandemic, uh, but also the needs of, be they financial, relational, just all the needs that we have. And the biggest need we have is Christ himself. Augustine, the great uh, church father, said, you know, our hearts are restless until they find rest in thee. So this morning, be honest with your needs, honest with Jesus honest with those around you, 
and then reach across the divides, race, gender, lifestyle, religion, make some friends and see that you can be a friend to someone and then discover living water by saying and doing uh, worshiping in spirit and truth and then to share the good news. You don't have to have all the answers. You just need to know, have a relationship with the one who is the answer, which is Jesus Christ, the same friend that that woman at the well made. Will you join me in prayer? Lord, as we think about this great story of Jesus and the woman at the well. We thank you for the great truths that are there. We pray that you'd help us to open our hearts and lives and to realize that there is a dryness in our soul that only you can refresh. So open, open the springs of living water that we might taste and see that your life, the water that you give, is life transforming. We pray this in Christ's name and all God's people said, amen.